Hey everyone, Michael Alm here. So this week it's the butternut challenge. What's the butternut challenge? Stick around and you'll find out. So the butternut challenge is issued by Zyla over at Beauty and the Bolt. And this all started from a conversation we had back in October at the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp. We were all gathered around a fire pit, a whole bunch of makers and me, and Zyla was talking about this wood called butternut. I'd never heard of it, but apparently she got a ton of it from a guy off of Craigslist. So she asked a whole bunch of people. I was like, yeah, I'd love to carve that. I'd love to see what, what comes out of it. And then I got home, completely forgot about the conversation, and about two months later, this shows up on my doorstep. I thought it was hilarious. I'm so excited to be a part of this project. Like I said, a bunch of other makers are doing it as well. I'll post links down below to the other videos. For now, let's get into my build, which might be spoiled already. If you follow Genki Nishiyama, you'll know what I'm doing. Uh, he is a woodworker out in Japan. He makes beautiful furniture pieces and he also carves wooden bananas. I love these things, I covet them. I wanted one so bad and every time they go on sale, they sell out super quickly. So I'm a wood carver in an homage to him. I'm gonna try and make one myself. I was looking at this block of wood. It's pretty much banana sized. So I'm gonna carve a banana out of butternut. Let's give it a go. So I bought a five pack of bananas at the grocery store and separated those out and tried to figure out which one I liked the form of. I found one that I liked the best and then traced that out on the block of butternut. I took the block of butternut over to the bandsaw and cut it out to rough shape. So my block of wood had a pretty significant crack in it right where that knot is, so I had to cut around it, but I wanted to get close to that knot because it had the most interesting grain. With those markings, I could now cut the sides off the banana and start shaping the top and the bottom. With the blank all cut out, I could draw in some guidelines for me while I start carving. These just give me sort of a start and stop point for when I start shaving away material. I'm using a Shinto rasp to do the bulk of the carving. And I chose this, this rasp to kind of show people a different way of carving. A lot of times people carve with a knife and you need to sharpen, the knives are expensive. Um, this is a $20 tool and it is super fun to use, really intuitive. It's got two grits, each side is a different grit. Um, there's a, a coarse and a fine. And honestly, I could do this all day. It is really, really fun and you can get nice subtle curves. I keep checking the banana to make sure that I'm getting the shape just right and just keep cruising along with that rasp. The last bit of shaping is to do on the stem and I'm being really cautious with this mostly because I'm worried that it might tear out. I didn't have any issues with it tearing out but I was, I was a little concerned about it. And with that, the rough shaping is all done. The next step, you guessed it, is sanding. There's a lot of sanding to do on this banana. It's probably a good hour worth of work just to sand this thing up. Uh, I started at 80 grit and then worked my way all the way up to 320. All right, so the ban banana is sanded and it's looking really, really nice. One thing that I'm having trouble with is I kind of want it to stand up on its own and it doesn't right now. So I'm gonna sand a little flat spot on the bottom of it and, uh, and then go from there. I think the next step after that is to gonna be adding some markings. Maybe not quite as much as this banana. It's getting a little abused from being uh, handled so much, but I'm really liking the shape of it. Looking really good. I was trying to find the best way of making the markings and I thought that the flat spots might be easiest to get a nice consistent burn with a lighter. Uh, that didn't really go so well. I, it took forever to get it to darken and it didn't really get that dark in the end. So I ended up going with plan B, which was the wood burning tool. 
I've had this little burner for a number of years and it's a really inexpensive tool. It's essentially a soldering iron with interchangeable tips and uh, you can draw with those tips. I just use this one chisel pointed tip uh, for the whole project and it was good for, for burning those broad faces as well as getting all the little dents and dings and bruises um, that bananas have. This was probably my favorite part of the project. Uh, it's really, really fun drawing all these little details in. It's honestly pretty hard to know when to stop. Oh man, that looks awesome. I am thrilled with that. All of the marks came out really nice. And I think I'm gonna stop right there. You could kind of go as far as you want. And this is looking really good to me. I had so much fun on this. I think I cut out a few more. I've got a little bit left over of the butternut and I found this chunk of Clara walnut that I think it's gonna look amazing. So let's trace out a few more, get them cut out, start carving, and, uh, and then we'll put finish on them. If you're interested in learning more about wood carving, I at this point have a number of videos on the different carving techniques that I use in my shop. Uh, everything from art projects to furniture pieces, power carving to hand carving. Uh, I'll post a playlist of all of the carving projects that I've done over the years and I'm hoping to continue to develop that. If you have any questions about carving, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. For the most part, carving the additional three bananas was just a rinse and repeat, doing the exact same thing again, although I definitely found that my technique was getting better with each one. I experimented a little bit with carving the stems by hand, and I think this might be a little bit better of a way to do it than the rasp. I tried to get two bananas out of the piece of butternut that I had left over, and in order to do that, I had to glue up this big check that was in the middle of it. I just filled that with CA glue, and as you can see, it's it's a visible crack, but it's not it's not too bad. All right, these are all done and ready for finish. I'm really excited to see how they turn out. I was doing some experiments and uh, I wasn't too happy with how dark they were going with a little bit of shellac or polyurethane or whatever. Um, so I think I'm gonna try and keep this wood as light as possible. And there's two options to do that. One is water-based polyurethane, which I use a lot. I use it on like the pattern plywood stuff, um, or I'm just gonna go with straight wax because I think it's gonna look more like a hand rubbed finish and these are hand carved, uh, which I really like. So I'm going with wax on the light ones, but when it comes to the walnut ones, that would be a shame not to bring out that wood grain. So I'm gonna use some de-wax shellac. This will bring out the iridescence in the wood and make it pop and then coat it with some wax over the top to, um, to get that nice hand rub look. If you're curious about wood finishes, I have a whole video on all the wood finishes that I use in my shop, the reasons why. I'll, I'll post a link up above. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other Maker videos. Uh, I've got a playlist posted. And if you guys would like to purchase one of these bananas, they're up on my website. They're $150,000. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.